Uh, hello everyone. Uh, greetings, greetings from the Japan Foundation Kuala Lumpur. My name is Shimada Seiya, and I am the moderator for uh, for today. I'd like to thank all of you for joining joining us on our new program called JFKL Talk Series. This series is initiated to reach out to everyone and introduce more about Japan through the lenses of professionals in various fields. For our third episode today, titled An Insight on the Buto, uh, Buto Art Form in Malaysia, we are going to focus on two topics, what is Buto and Buto in Malaysia. Now let me invite uh, our speaker today, Mr. Lee Sui Kyung. Hello, Suikyung. Uh, your mic is muted. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hello, Seiya-san. Thank uh, you. How are you today? Very good, thank you. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Uh, let me introduce the, the Suikyung's profile. The, he is the artistic director of Kuala Lumpur Buto Festival from 2008 until 2019, and the artistic director of New Bakan Buto. <clears throat> in the 30 years of immersive experience in the performing arts, Suiken has traveled widely around the globe with his art, progressing from contemporary dance to ballet to a diverse range of traditional martial arts and different forms of physical training, especially Qigong, Tai Chi, and Buto, and, and yoga. He developed Diana dance or dance of mindfulness through delving further into Buddhism. Today, uh, also we, uh, we have uh, another guest speaker with us who will be joining this session and they are Dr. Richard Chua and Lina Ang. Hello, Dr. Cho, Dr. Richard and the Ms. Lina. Thank you. And let me introduce about two, two individuals. Dr. Richard Chua is a senior lecturer and he is a performing arts educator in Singapore and Malaysia, with his research interests lie in Chinese theaters in Singapore and Malaysia, and theater ecologies and culture, performance and politics, entertainment arts and online arts criticism, criticism and media. For Lina, uh, Lina An, on the other hand, is Sui Kyun's Buto teacher and the first Buto artist in Malaysia. Buto was first introduced to the Malaysian audience through Lina An's debut performance back in 1992, which led to the birth of first Buto company in Malaysia called Taro Dance Theatre. Lina currently lives in the US, US teaching yoga in New Jersey and New York her passion for movement and its power to communicate, heal, and speak truth continues through yoga. Okay, all right. Uh, let me share with you about today's session. This session will be split into two parts. For the first part, we will have Dr. Richard and Sui Kyun to explain what is Buto and focuses on Sui Kyun's as long as long-time Buto practitioner in Malaysia. Second part, we will invite Lina to tell us how Buto initiated in Malaysia and how Lina and Sui Kyun's involvement into Buto. After that, we will wrap up that with Q&A session. For each part, we will have a short break in between. If you have any questions you'd like to ask, feel free to share in the comment, comment section and we will gather them for the Q&A session afterwards. Uh, if you have any question, ah, uh, sorry. Uh, before we begin, let's watch a short video introducing what is what Buto is about.
Hey, the video you just watched is titled Dream Cumbria from the Dairakudakan the Buto Company in Japan. Hey. So then, now uh, let me invite Dr. Richard to talk about what is Buto. Dr. Richard, please. Thank you very much, Sia San. Right, uh, in, to put it simply, Buto originated in Japan with one performance mm -hmm. by one of the founders, uh, Tatsumi Hijikata. Uh, the title of the performance was Kinjiki in mm -hmm. 1959. Mm -hmm. The other founder is uh, Kazuo Ono. Mm -hmm. Now, originally, Buto was uh, named as Ankoku Buto, which mm -hmm. is about, which is in translated as Dance of Utter Darkness. Mm -hmm. Now, why is this Utter Darkness? Because uh, Buto is a dance form that's created after the World War. Mm -hmm. And that was a time where the Japanese uh, people needed to have deep reflection. And most importantly, is to find the spirit. And you know, finding a spirit is definitely not easy. It has to be very open so that uh, you are able to allow for all kinds of reflections to come in. So what the founders did Hijikata and Ono, they threw away the constraints of Western dance to free themselves from, and also to free themselves from the highly codified Japanese tradition of no drama and the Nihon Buyo, which is the mm. Japanese classical dance. Mm. So what they did was that they freely developed movement, right? Uh, in order to express how they feel. And feeling is very, very important, yeah? because at the end of the day, it is the environment what you are thinking and reflecting, your experiences all come together in one process. Mm -hmm. So when I saw Sui Kyung uh, sitting on top of an incense burner-like um, structure in Macau Fringe Festival, and I was actually looking for a certain kind of rebellion because um, it is a, the original Bhutto spirit is very rebellious. But instead, I saw a very beautiful performance. Mm. And why Sui Kyung is so special mm. is because his form of rebellion is not a direct response or a rebellion of a certain form, but to actually excavate from within what he has been thinking and reflecting in order to develop something that's spiritually rich and also meditative. So as you can see, the first picture that I'm showing you right here on screen, um, Sui Kyung and, and former dancer Kwan Nam together as Arhats. Uh, Arhats are figures in Buddhism that has attained Nirvana and also a, a high state of spiritual enlightenment. And what is interesting about it is that uh, you can see that the elements that Sui Kyung and Nyo Bakan, his company used, is actually very Chinese culture in its core. Let's go to the next picture. Now, in the next picture, it's a performance um, called The River of Rhapsody. Uh, in Chinese, it's called Qingming Shanghe Tu. Basically, using this really famous uh, painting in traditional China, Sui Kyung actually planted himself into the peoples, you know, in, in the community, in a spiritual and aesthetically, in, a, in, an, in an aesthetic way. And in the next picture, that you could see that actually, um, visually at least, um, th these characters are being put into the picture, right? Can we go to the next picture, please? Uh, the next uh, visual. Yeah, as you can see that uh, Sui Kyung is being planted, right? In, the, in, in, in within the picture. So that provides a lot of um, uh, opportunities for us to reflect and also to look at how culture could be developed grounds up. Okay, so in Malaysia, you know, the special thing about um, Nyo Bakan is that um, there is an extension of Bhutto from its traditional form uh, or traditional uh, philosophy in Japan and into Malaysia where through Sui Kyung, unknowingly for him, is that um, he has developed a, a, a kind of Bhutto performance, a kind of performance inspired by Bhutto but with Malaysian sensibilities. And what this Malaysian sensibility are we talking about? 
is actually talking about the cultures in Malaysia. And because Sui Kiong is uh, rooted in Chinese culture, so he uses the things that he are, he's very familiar with and in order to put into his performance. As you, and definitely other elements could also be uh, used or put together using Buto as a frame and as a base as well. But definitely the forms developed from other uh, cultural elements will be very different from Sui Kiong. So this is what I've observed uh, through the years by watching the performances. And I could see that forming up very, very strongly. So as Sui Kiong moves on now in the form of a meditative um, dance form, which is, uh, we cannot call it strictly Buto anymore because uh, Sui Kiong has developed his own practice and also his own form of aesthetic. But what is really important is that um, Buto provides a strong basis a very strong frame for other dance forms or movement forms, as I would call it, to develop in Malaysia. So uh, can we go to the next picture? Uh, this is to me uh, the best uh, picture to showcase how a performance inspired by Bhutto um, actually extended Bhutto out, you know, from the existing um, very, um, uh, disheveled and raw kind of aesthetic to something that could directly respond to the cultural elements in a particular um, culture, right? For example, what we're talking about here is the Malaysian culture. As you can see that um, Jess, a former dancer of Nyobakan, dressed in a very contemporary spaghetti uh, top, Right, which reflects the uh, contemporary nature of Malaysia in its urbanized um, context and city, and yet putting on this uh, traditional wedding headdress uh, of Chinese culture. So you should see it actually in performance because when I see it, she was also in high heel shoes, the body that she has um, um, created through Buto is not a direct. Um, a rebellious body. No, it's not that, but it is a body that, 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 that quietly subverts all the different cultural elements and also the whole idea of uh, multiculturalism in Malaysia. And through this, what um, Liu Bakan and Sui Kiong and the former dancers and jazz did was actually to um, come together to create a new response a new way of looking a new form, which is grounds up, very Malaysian. Right? And uh, can we go to the next picture? So these pictures are taken by the, the photographer, number two photography, and the posters are generally done by a well-known Malaysian the designer, Fuchi Wei. Yeah? So as you can see that even though that she's holding onto an umbrella and she was moving um, in that context of an old house um, in Malaysia, but the whole visual itself is very different from what you have seen earlier in the video. Yeah, the, the so-called, the, 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 the Japanese Buto in its original form. So you can see that there are many different um, things that we could talk about later through the conversation and we would be able to hear more intimate and personal creative uh, perspectives from Sui Kiang later. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Richard. The, can I ask you a question? The, uh, have you ever heard any like a Buto company in in this region? Or the I, I understand you now you live in Singapore, but the is there any Buto dancer in Singapore? Mm, okay, when we talk about Buto. <clears throat> sorry, pardon me. <clears throat> in terms of Buto company, in the region is only Malaysia. Mm. We have got a Buto company. Mm. In Singapore, pretty much um, we um, study and research about Buto and we mm. watch Buto performances in our festivals. Mm. And also we have got training mm. from Buto practitioners in our <clears throat> conservatory mm -hmm. um, acting school, mm -hmm. uh, where like, for example, the <clears throat> Intercultural Theatre Institute, where they mm. focus on intercultural works. Mm -hmm and also putting in different forms for mm. performance, okay? Mm -hmm. 
And in other countries, also in contemporary dance scenes, there are also dancers who are inspired by the spirit and the philosophy of Bhutto. Mm -hmm. And from there, taking that as a point of departure mm -hmm. uh, to develop new forms of work as well. Mm -hmm. But to really um, say that um, in terms of starting a Bhutto company and devoting um, the works of Bhutto right now in Southeast Asia, as far as I know, mm -hmm. right, it's uh, Malaysia and it's uh, Sui Kyung's uh, Nyobakan. Mm -hmm. But that company, uh, but Nyobakan in itself, cannot be strictly be called as a Bhutto company because it has developed an, a, a new aesthetics, mm -hmm. but it is an extension of Bhutto. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Richard. And now the, let me invite the Sui Kyun, the <clears throat> to speak about the, how to say, the, as a, the not the life of Bhutto dancer, but the, uh, the, the, to introduce who, who is Lee Sui Kyun and to show the, how you have been together with the, this art form. So then the, to start the chat, the conversation with Sui Kyun, the, let me ask you about the, the background of your dance. How, before, before you start the Bhutto, the, what, did you go through any training of the, any other dance form? Yes, I do. I, I was uh, first started with uh, contemporary dance a hmm. few, years, few years later, and then I, I start um, the training of ballet hmm. for quite many years. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, in the 90s, hmm. uh, I still remember in Dewan Bandaraya Auditorium, Mm -hmm. And I watch, I watch uh, Lina Ang's uh, performance. Mm -hmm. By the time I, I had no idea what, what she was doing, mm -hmm. and it was the, uh, it were two boys, uh, dancing with her. Mm -hmm. I I was uh, I was shocked when I watched that performance, mm -hmm. and it was so. Um, excited to me. Mm. It was my first time uh, seeing this kind of this kind of uh, moving quality or this kind of dancing uh, uh, style. Mm. So and then it seems like this is like a, a sound of my of my soul that this is what uh, about dance means to me, mm -hmm. not contemporary dance. So mm -hmm. then uh, after that, and then I, I have a coach, Alina. So and then I have a time to, to learn under her. So mm -hmm. that was my how I started my Bhutto <coughs> training. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And the, I understand the it is a quite a bit shocking the to see the Bhutto performance first time. It's totally different from the Western dance, which the, for example the. Western, Western dance gives higher priority for the jumping high or rounding fast, but the Bhutto is totally opposite. The very slow, and the sometimes it's very dark, and, the, and very low. The usually Bhutto dance dancer do not jump on the stage. Yeah, but the so uh, I understand your first feeling, but the. To continue this art form, the nearly 30 years, it's something different, different story, I think. So what do you think, what was the drive for you to continue this art form until now? Mm. Somehow, this like a, a call, a calling from the soul <laughs> inside me. <laughs> um, can you imagine? This kind of image, yeah. mm -hmm. I love it very much. So after I learned from Lena, mm. after I think two years, and then she married, and then she said she do not want to stay in Malaysia anymore. <laughs> <laughs> she want to follow her husband to, to the US. Anyhow, and then later on, I we have because it was no internet, mm. so there's no way for me to. To uh, do any research or resources, 
um, yes, yeah, somehow. And then uh, Singapore, Singapore Art Festival mm -hmm. was very important to me. Mm. See, I still keep this program. This is 1998. Ah. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was my crazy day. Mm. So I have to take the bus, the midnight bus, <laughs> to go to Singapore from KL. Mm. And then the next day, spend the whole day, like, you know, walking around. And then nighttime, watch a show. And then stay overnight and then mm. came back. <laughs> so, and I still keep, keep, keep this program book. Um, it was so excited to me mm. and very, very important to me mm. to, to watch the Butoh performance mm -hmm. from, from Japan. Mm -hmm. so, and then um, I, I got this book uh -huh. in, uh, in, the, in New York flea market. Wow. Yeah, I was so excited. So this is uh, such a, see, look at it images image like this oh. i think this is from from Biakosha. yeah 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 um yes yeah, somehow uh, i can't really uh, uh give a reason why i like buto somehow it's a calling from my soul mm. I, I just like this kind of art form mm. and to me is is very real mm. and somehow after many years i realized this is a way to heal my soul, mm -hmm. so I, I need I need to go through all this uh, ugliness. Mm -hmm. uh, I think touch wood, I do not need to uh, go pass through the the real suffering uh, of my body and my life. Mm -hmm. But somehow I think because I I do buto, and then it's helped me pass through all this suffering you see and then i jump over from mm. from that somehow uh, i see it as a healing mm. for myself so in the same time uh, i was also um, uh, exploring the philosophy of uh, buddhism mm -hmm. the zen philosophy and then somehow uh, through many practice uh, qigong tai chi and also yoga and somehow, so all this technique and philosophy and, and it's gelled together. Mm -hmm. and, and nowadays, uh, um, my Bhutto way is more to like uh, a healing to me. Mm -hmm. And yet, not only to me, but also for the, for the audience who mm -hmm. are attending the performance. Because when we are in a highly... Uh, awareness state and then somehow we have we we have a very uh, we have a strong power of uh, of a healing uh, energy uh, projecting mm -hmm. so somehow in in the in the entire theater will be fulfilled with the uh, a kind of grounded energy Mm -hmm. uh, which is a, a meditative state and everybody will go through the, the meditative uh, state and then somehow this is uh, the quality of healing mm. and I am I call this a mindfulness theater mm -hmm. yes uh, I wonder um, nice screen like, do, do you have a caption of the some of the photograph of a Malay I, I pass you the photograph of Malaysian context. Some, some of the, those posters, do you have it? If you have it, you can show it. Uh, yes, like, like Ti Chang is, uh, is one of the uh, performance that I, I love the most. So I would like to share the video later, a short clip. For, for this, uh, uh, the English name called uh, Earth Womb. Um, uh, this this bodhisattva also very popular in Japan, mm. and this is this is a this is a creation in the, in what year? Yeah, two thousand eighteen, uh, by the uh, with the support 
by a Japan Foundation, we were able to say <laughs> yes. We were able to to invite to invite a uh, a young Buto artist from Japan. Obviously, he he is still the active member of Shagai Joko. Oh, so wow. which is which is uh which is uh, uh, a legendary photo company mm. which I, I i i love them a lot i i watch many of their performance i al- always almost never miss their performance in the singapore art festival mm, mm, mm. Uh, yeah it was my honor to uh, invite uh dai i forgot his full name uh, dai uh, to to join me for for this production, uh, uh, Dai Matsuoka. Ah, Dai Matsuoka. Yes, yes. And then the the following years, I will, I invite him again uh, for for the old year, the king year. Uh, okay. So can can we break for the for for the uh, video now for of who? Buto teacher and the first Buto artist in Malaysia. Usually she lives in New York, but the now she's back to Malaysia now in Kuala Lumpur. Is it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Great. So, the could you share about the how the, how you introduce how you, how you encountered with this art form Buto, and so how you introduce this art form to Malaysian audience. Okay, so the first time I saw Buto, which I didn't know was Buto, I just mm. thought I was going to a contemporary dance performance, and I saw Eko and Koma. They were both, uh, I would call them Buto artists, although they don't call themselves Buto artists. And that was in New York in 1986. And I was like, the feeling that Kyung described when he first saw Buto. It was that feeling that you, your, your something in you moved. Like you, you didn't, you couldn't put a name on what you saw, but your whole soul was involved when you, you were watching. So I felt that way very similarly when I first saw Echo and Coma, and um, I it stayed with me, it never left me, even though I didn't know where to find them, what you know, Buto was until 1990 which was like you know four or five years later when i saw a picture of a flyer in i was doing grad school then in hawaii university of hawaii and i saw a a poster of a woman in in a in a posture that reminded me of echo and coma and it said buto workshop and that's all I needed. I said, I have to go find out what this was. And so I did this first Buto workshop with a woman named Cheryl Flehardy, who had just came, come to Hawaii. She was dancing with Popo Shiraishi 
in the East Village in New York before that. So that was my introduction to Bhutto before, you know, after I had seen Echo and Coma. So I just loved Bhutto for, I mainly loved the practice. I mean, performance was almost secondary at that time because every time we practiced, it was like, it was meditation, it was cathartic, it was, it was like a soul cleansing type activity, you know, and being able to focus and be quiet for that long a time when the world is not like that um, was a big part of why I loved Bhutto. So when I came back to Malaysia, um, I really did not have intentions of performing Bhutto because I came back to teach. I was a dance ethnologist then, and I was determined to to do dance ethnology at, um, so anyway, I, I was teaching at University of Malaya, but um, a friend invited me to teach. Uh, okay, these are pictures I did, my first performance with Kyung at, with Kwang Tung Dance Theater. It was called the eighth one. Yeah, Kwang Si. Oh, sorry, Kwang Si. And then going back, um, you know, my friend was Wong Hoi Chong and he was teaching at the Malaysian Institute of Art. He, his students at that time, 1992, were interested in performance art. And he thought um, Bhutto would be quite uh, relevant to what they were doing. So he invited me to teach there. Um, and I did, I think a weekend of workshop at MIA and that was the first time um, I, that my, my first dances came from MIA. And th that was mainly what I wanted to do. I just wanted to share Bhutto. I mean, I, I thought that, you know, if I ha have benefited so much from it, I'm sure others would. And so they were, um, Two of my first dancers were actually art students and they had not taken any form of dance before. So that was the power of Bhutto. You know, I, it, it appealed to people of a certain, I, I don't know, uh, aesthetic sense or, you know, whatever it was, it, 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 Ironically, it doesn't appeal to trained dancers as much. And for trained dancers, it was actually a very difficult practice because it was all about letting go of what you know, all the technique that you have acquired. So I, I just wanted to teach and, and practice Bhutto. And, and then this friend of mine also then, um, asked if I would like to perform at the, a International Women's Day celebration that he and his friends were organizing. And that was in Central Market. So that was like, I said, sure, you know, I said, for sure people would think I'm crazy, you know, because it was outdoors and that was my first time, you know, that people saw Bhutto. But the reaction I got was, um, was you know, astounding but not surprising so it was in in the in the outdoor central market region and there were i think at least 300 you know people like immigrant workers who used to hang out in central market i don't even know if they still do but you know people were known to lepa out there and the whole place was quiet for the length of my performance i don't know how long it was maybe 20 minutes and, and again, you know, that is what Bhutto does to you. Like, like Kyung said, you know, that you, you don't just transform yourself, but something about the, the, the quality of, you know, awareness that you have translates and transfers to your audience. So I, you know, I've, seen things like that happen many times when I used to perform. Mm. Um, but I thought, oh, maybe this is something I should do in Malaysia. <laughs> so then that was what 
um, got it started. I mean, that was a crucial uh, performance because I met so many people there, people in theater, people in dance, people in social work. Mm. That all contributed to how I went on with uh, Buto. So th th that's the story before the Kion watch your performance at the Dewan Bandaraya. Right. I see, see. So I didn't um, know Kyung until he approached me. And then I, Kyung was also part of the, this Kwangsi uh, organization. And I'm not sure how, but I got invited to teach there. <laughs> And somehow I, I taught modern dance, which I don't know why I taught modern dance, <laughs> but that's what I taught. But, you know, I tried to put in Buto as much as I could. And so this, these pictures that Kyung is showing uh, was a competition we were participating. I think it was in Malacca. And uh, it was about the time of the, um, I don't know, the eighth moon or ninth moon in Chinese culture, the seventh month is like the month of the, where the dead spirit comes out. And then the eighth moon is the big celebration. Kyung, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, okay? <laughs> but anyway, right. that, was, right. yeah, okay, that was what inspired me um, to do this piece. And Kyung, when I first worked with him in this piece, I just loved him right from the start because he was, you know, um, he, I was new, I was a newcomer. I probably, you know, I, I could not speak Cantonese or Mandarin. So I was very embarrassed. I had to teach in English. And um, he was just so open and earnest and, and playful. And it made it all very easy for me to work there. And Kyung, I think we won the competition, no? Yes, we won. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was first time for, for the Chinese community to see Wuto, I think. Yeah. So because the, comp the competition, uh, the, 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 the competition, uh, the dance group, they, they, they all came from the whole Malaysia. Uh, the and, then, and then we performed this at a temple, right? Uh, not the temple, I, uh, it was a stage. I, I know, this was on stage, but later we translated it into a site performance and it was a temple near uh, Chinatown. It was, uh, I remember we, we did this performance. Maybe you don't remember. Mm, I forgot. Um, but can I interrupt the... I think the, the Buto is the something new to every judges at the competition, but the, if they chose the, this piece as a number one, the, the judges are so generous, I think. <laughs> what do you say? That's another thing, you know, about Buto, or at least what I was doing. I mean, I knew I had very clear images of what Japanese Buto looked like, but I was determined that whatever I did was going to be either, you know, whatever that is true to me. And, and me being a Chinese woman from Malaysia who grew up in Malaysia, who had all these Western inputs and in education. So I wasn't going to mimic, you know, what the Japanese did, but I'm, I'm gonna use the practice to create what is true to me. So that was my, always my premise for, you know, creation. Hmm. This piece was 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 really a turning point uh, for me as as a as a person and also as a as a performing artist. <laughs> thank you, Lena. <laughs> <laughs> and th thank you, Lena and the Sukyon. The the time is running up, so then uh, the let, let us take a, another short break for two minutes. Thank you very much. Hey, welcome back, everyone. The now the uh, how to say it? it's a Q and A time. So for those who have any questions to any of the three speakers, uh, please feel free to write type in to the chat box. 
So the, at the moment, there is one comment from the Mr. Ivan Tan. The, he says, it would be nice to watch different short clip of Suikyon Buto twist. Looking forward to more short clips. Okay, that's it. The, okay, then the, let me throw the a bit simple question to Suikyon. Uh, the, many of your, how do you say, uh, the performance are in the, how to say, involves in the white painting, white body painting, and also some nudity. So the, what, how significant are those for your performance? But, but somehow, most importantly, when, when we take out our baju, so this is how okay, I am a yoga teacher. Uh, you are the director of Japan Foundation. So you have your baju <laughs> and you have your skin color. So you have your accessory. And somehow if you remove all this, and then who are you? So, so this will make, first of all, the, the artist himself to, to change. So from there, so it's a very important starting point to, uh, to explore um, what it is about. Somehow it's a kind of a questioning, it's a kind of a, a, a uncertain yeah, or uh, waiting for the answer or no answer. So it's just like break everything that uh, we, we, we expected. <laughs> And so, Sui Kyung, out of curiosity, because you mentioned that um, as an artist, uh, when you take off everything and you're you are literally naked, right? But the nakedness in terms of spirit and thought is something that I am just curious because you will be very fragile and you are open yourself up to the world. Uh, what was that process like in that sense to try to work with the, the environment or spiritually? Yeah, just that, that's a, my question and extension. Ah, Richard, uh, uh, please uh, uh, ex explain briefly in Mandarin. Thank you. Uh, when you the 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 uh, 在表演的时候，我想了解一下那个过程，就是一个人在最脆弱的时候，如何去驾驭，你知道那一切一切的，你知道思想和你的周围的环境，那是一个怎么样的一个状况？谢谢。Yeah, you know, it's a kind of yes, the fragile, but yet, uh, it's that's a. Uh, uh, even uh, a powerful uh, energy behind to support the fragile somehow in and out. So this is this is fun. This is fun because there's a lot of uh, uh, unknown situation. Uh, back to your question is like uh, how are we interact and you know facing and uh, having a conversation within you see all these different elements. So somehow, uh, there's a sense of adventure, and also this uh, uncertainty gives rise to a lot of surprises. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And the, uh, there's a question from the Swili An. Does a white painting make you a blank slate? Blank slate, Richard Oh, yes. Uh, so this is also uh, one of the purpose of why we are uh, paint, painting in, in, in white. Mm -hmm. Yes. So to, to remove everything and who <laughs> are you? <laughs> Can I pass the to Lina? Do you have any other how does it interpretation? Or the, did you perform in the in the white? Yes, I did. Um, for me, it was a lot of it was ritualistic. It was mm. a way to get into the state mm. of 
performance. Um, so it was part of the ritual of preparation, mm. but also it was very much um, to create sort of this blank, you know, empty body, you know, mm. that you are not already imprinted with so many things. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, of course, once you put on something, you're not blank, you know. Mm. So anyway, mm. <laughs> it's, it's, um, I, I always, it was a very powerful ritual for me, the act of, you know, painting and quieting down. Okay, thank you. And the next, e, next is the from the new toll. The maybe this is for Kyung. The may I ask for Buto class in KL? Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, I always want to share, share hope, uh, more people mm. uh, to learn and to know uh, Buto. Mm. Um, yes, but uh, I do not have regular Buto classes for the time being mm -hmm. because uh, really no demand. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I hope one day, so I, I will plan accordingly. Uh, yeah, please uh, follow my Facebook, Li Sui Kyung, mm -hmm. or the Facebook of uh, KL Buto Fest. Mm -hmm. KL Buto Fest. And then you can see uh, many of our uh, previous uh, record. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, and just show the question from me, another question from me, but the, the, I think the, you, I, I assume you had some difficulty to develop your own audience because the, this art form is not practiced, practiced by many and the only limited people, how to say, had information about this art form. So the, could you share about the how, how you managed to develop your own the audience? Without audience, you cannot be performer, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, like this kind of images, mm -hmm. we, we can't do this in, you know, in the public, obviously, like public, public. Mm -hmm. um, like we can't do this in the Chinese, Chinese New Year event or Christmas event, <laughs> you see. Uh, <laughs> but obviously, this, this, is, this, this is a very unique art form. But I try my best to, to make it uh, beautiful <laughs> and elaborate <laughs> um, in order for people to to, to see another perspective of Buto. Uh, so Buto not only uh, ugly, but there's a kind of a beauty of Buto. Um, obviously, in the KL Buto Fest, uh, 12 years continuous, we, we never stop. But yes, we always uh, got support from Japan Foundation. <laughs> um, well, in the program of the KL Buto Fest, uh, beside, beside the actual uh, gala performance in the theater, we always have another kind of like casual performance. It's like a free performance in the, in the public area, like uh, in the park or in the shopping complex. Uh, obviously like a public car, so they support us a lot. Um, and and we offer them so we we did uh, the free performance for the for the shoppers so in order for uh, more people to to see Uto and 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 we make it like more friendly in a way but somehow Lina I want to ask you because Lina she well such a she, she is a diva. La, huh? <laughs> <laughs> she, she, she is well, very a gorgeous lady. And she did a lot of site-specific performance. Mm. Somehow, after many years, I realized myself, I like to do site-specific performance as well. And then I realized, oh, this is the seed from my first Buto teacher, Lena Alisi. <laughs> Because I think out of 10, maybe like nine performances were like doing outdoor or the public area, you mm -hmm. see. 
So I went uh, back to the question just now and then. So it was uh, accumulate many of my site specific performance. So therefore, I have the capability mm. to you know uh, interact with the environment uh, mm. with the Bootstrap performance. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So the it's time to wrap up the excuse me, but the, the thank you thank you so much for the Suikyon and Lina and the Dr. Richard for being here with us today mm -hmm. and the, for introducing uh, to us the world of Buto. Uh, before we end the session today, we would like to ask everyone to help us by filling out the questionnaire mm -hmm. for for us to hear your feedback and improve for our future events. And you can just click on the link shared in the comments, or you can also scan the QR code that is currently displayed on the screen. E is it? Not yet, right? <laughs> okay. Hi. The, oh, on behalf of JFKL, I hope everyone enjoyed the session today. And the, before saying goodbye, the, I think the Suikyun has some announcement, right? Oh, yes, please. Uh, there's a new production. Next weekend, which is April 2nd and 3rd. So look at the image. So this is also like a mass performance. So uh, this is the character inspired from uh, Bodhidharma. So uh, it's, I call it uh, a mindfulness theater. So it's a collaboration of Bhutto and uh, percussion. So uh, I work with uh, Soul Impact percussion. So from the images you can see, uh, so because I want to look at the uh, uh, the laughing pictures, I want to also show that <laughs> this is not a like serious serious thing, but but it is a it's an interesting uh, performance. Come and watch uh, in uh, PJ Pack next uh, Saturday and Sunday. Oh, April second and third. Yeah, next week, next weekend. Uh, yes, weekend and then next week. And just uh, there is also the announcement from the Japan Foundation. The I think the you watch the the short video clip of the Buto performance by Dai, by Dai Rakudakan at the beginning of this session. And the now the Japan Foundation has been set up the the new platform of YouTube channel mm -hmm. called the, the Stage Beyond Borders. And uh, this channel, the you can enjoy the so many genre of the performing arts in from Japan, including some buto companies, the uh, industrial, the traditional theater, and the contemporary dance and contemporary theater. So, the, please, if you are interested in, please check the stage Beyond Borders under the YouTube channel. Thank you very much.